coming out with this idea that there should be one family, one ticket, but leaving entrenched political families like the Gandhis out of the ambit, saying if you've been around for five years, then it's kosher, doesn't take away the tag of the Congress being a party by Dinis for Dinis. Uh, and this Chintin Shivir, will it lead to any real change or will this just help Prime Minister Modi and the BJP push the charge that this is a party by Dinis for Dinis and it's refusing to change? Joining me for perspective on what's going on in Udaipur, I want to welcome first Rajdeep Sardesai. He's been speaking to Congress leaders even as we were preparing for the show. He'll give us some very sharp insights as always. We've got Rashid Kidwai, one of our foremost watchers of the Congress. Kaushik Deka, executive editor at India Today magazine, has a fine story out in the magazine this week on how this is the Congress's last chance. Uh, for an official perspective from the Congress, we're joined by Professor Gaurav Vallabh. Squaring off against him is Sanju Verma from the BJP and last but not least Shantanu Gupta who is a biographer on Yogi Adityanath and tracks Indian politics. Rajdeep, to you first. Do you think that anything is likely to emerge from this Chintin Shivir which could signal that the Congress has understood how deep an abyss they are in and this is a party that wants to fight back? You know, there is a French saying, uh, I'm not very good with my French, even if I did it in school, uh, basically suggesting the more things change, the more they remain the same. That's exactly the condition in which the Congress finds itself now. Because, you know, you've got, uh, I've got the French saying, I was trying to get it right, plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. The more things change, the more they remain the same. Look, a Chintin Shivir is important for any party particularly when you've gone through a series of electoral debacles and you seem to be struggling this time for existence. It's an existential crisis. You've reached out to Udaipur because it's the only one of only two states where there's actually a Congress government where you have a chief minister. At a time like this, I think most congressmen know what the problem is. They know at the moment that they are ideologically confused. They know that they are organizationally weakened. And they know at the moment that there is a leadership vacuum. The, the, the problem is known. The question is, Rahul, the solution. The solution cannot be done through band-aid. The solution requires a patient in ICU going through surgery. Every Congress person that I have spoken to is going into this Chintin Shivir with very low expectations because their fear is that this will be another talking shop. There will be lots of talk about Desh Bachana hai, we need to you know, revolutionize the party, but are you willing to walk the talk on all three issues? Are you willing to end the ideological confusion? What is your approach towards Hindutva nationalism? Let it be very clear rather than speaking in different voices. Number two, what is your, what recipe do you have for organizational uh, chaos and, and, and the sort of ossification organizationally? And number three, the elephant in the room. What have you decided about the future leadership? I have just got a message that Kapil Sibyl has not gone. A member of the G23. Now I am not saying that Kapil Sibyl is a mass leader, but he's not gone there because remember he's the Was only... he invited? He was definitely invited. He's the only leader who has openly until now in the last few months said that we need a non-Gandhi at the helm. So he has chosen not to go. There are a number of others who also feel like him but are scared and afraid of raising the issue because there are also no easy options. Who are the options? If the Gandhis are to, if you want a non-Gandhi at, at the helm, who is that non-Gandhi mass connect leader who is actually going to galvanize the troops? You can't solve the problem only at the leadership level. You have to solve it organizationally. You have to solve it ideologically, Rahul. In, in a democracy, leadership emerges. Barack Obama came from nowhere. Bill Clinton came from nowhere. Tony it Blair came the, from nowhere. It is for the Congress party to decide to, uh, what you are saying is an issue that the Congress party is going to have to resolve, not through a ch Chintin Shivir alone, but over the next few months, because time is running out. There's no, I'll just give you one final point. I remember going to a uh, Chintin Shivir similar in 98. September 98, Sonia Gandhi had just taken over four or five months ago. There was a sense of, you know, uh, of concern, but there wasn't demoralization. And Sonia Gandhi in her own way was able to sort of rebuild the party step by step. Now there's demoralization. How are you going to revive a demoralized party? You have to energize it by providing some new dramatic ideas, which could include, as you said, the possibility of a completely new leadership. But is that even being discussed? Rashid Kidwai, because from what I can hear, 
from what uh, Supriya and Mausumi are sending us uh, from Udaipur. We are just hearing people in the Congress say how, why it's important for Rahul Gandhi coming back. The fact that he's discredited, the fact that time after time it's been shown that the Gandhis can't lead the Congress to power and that there is need for new leadership. That's not being spoken of at all. It's almost as if this whole uh, orchestra has been engineered to ensure that people say we want Rahul Gandhi once again and that the, the only time Congress did well in 2018 was when Rahul was in charge. Uh, Rahul, it is for the Congress to decide. There are two two schools of thought. One is, of course, Rahul Gandhi himself. He can clear air surrounding whether he wants to take responsibility or he wants some non-Gandhi uh, non member to be head of the Congress, as you are suggesting. And for that matter, G23. Kapil Sibbal may not have gone, but Ulam Nabi Azad is the senior most Congress leader in the country or one of the senior most. And the number of them are there. G23 says, you know, 23. And I think 8, 10, 12, 15 of them are there. If they don't speak up at a party forum, where will they speak? What is the point of writing letters and holding conversation with journalists or in TV debates? This is a time for them. And, you know, politicians know how to say things. Without annoying Sonia Gandhi or Rahul Gandhi, they can say it. So it is, I am saying, it's a, it's a call for both and an and opportunity for the Gandhis to uh, settle the leadership issue and for G23 to... No, but you're, you're, you're beating around the bush. Tell me your reading of the situation. Will any of the likes of, say, Gulam Nabi Azad or the others who've been disenchanted with the Gandhi leadership actually have the courage to stand up and tell it as it is? Or will they just uh, mollycoddle in front of a public gathering and not say very much and that will be back to square one with, as Rajdeep says, a lot of talk but not amounting to very much at the end? So therefore, I'm, that's what I'm saying. It is for them to decide. But if they are really indeed unhappy, then they should say it so. They will not get any other forum now. It is for them. I cannot speculate. Some of them have told me privately that they would be saying, they would be, you know, talking about these issues. But uh, so far, there is no sign of it. Okay, Gaurav Vallabh, the official uh, Congress spokesperson here. The big question, of course, your party says that there will be a one family, one ticket principle and then builds in so many caveats that if you've been around for more than five years, then it doesn't apply, which essentially means a political family like the Gandhi can have more than one member, which essentially means that the charge that the BJP would level or the Prime Minister would level about the Congress being a party Bidenist, Fordenist, that doesn't change. So is the party serious about the fact that they have cancer and that cancer needs chemotherapy? Or are they just applying Band-Aid for a problem which is far greater than a Band-Aid can solve? Uh, Rahul, this Chintan Shivir name is Nav Sankalp and Nav Sankalp means new resolutions, new ideas, new thought process and I am, why I don't know why Rajdeep is so uh, pessimistic, today is the first day and uh, Rajdeep gave his opinion, I don't know what prompted him to give that opinion. I, we as a Congress worker are very optimistic and I am telling you the issues which you had raised, all of those issues will be answered day after tomorrow. So you will find the answers, concrete answers to the issues, questions, because this is Nav Sankal. Mind it, extraordinary problems has to be resolved by extraordinary resolutions. And this Chintan Shivir is all about extraordinary resolutions, out-of-box thought process. A, a Congress, a Congress which is ready for taking BJP in the upcoming assembly elections as well as 2024 uh, uh, Lok Sabha elections. So we, I, I just want to brief you Rahul that we had today, we had a six groups, each group we had a free flow of idea. I was part and parcel of economy group, we have a political group, social empowerment group, organization group, we have a group on youth, we have another group on farmers. So in, in my group we have around 60 people across the country and we had a free flow of ideas and I am telling you the, 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 the quality of ideas we are getting, we are coming with a extraordinary resolutions day after t tomorrow and Rajdeep ji, don't be so uh, pessimistic. As a, as a Congress worker, we all here are very op, uh, optimistic and we are coming with extraordinary resolutions 
to beat divide and rule policy of BJP, to defeat the BJP who gave the highest inflation to the people of our country, you know, to defeat the BJP bet... who gave the people of our country the sure. highest number of unemployment levels. No, Gaurav Vallabh is a very no, I, I, I just want yeah. to say, yeah. I am not being pessimistic, but journalists, sir, journalists are entitled to be skeptical because we have watched your party over the last 20 years making various announcements and then not acting on it. I will be, you know, I, all of us would like to see a strong opposition, yeah. a strong Congress. We would like to see these extraordinary steps that you are going to take. But you know, when I look at the number, I'll just give you one fact. Karnataka, Rahul has 40 vice presidents and 105 general secretaries. Gujarat has, I think, 75 general secretaries and about 20 vice presidents. Now, is that the way? I mean, are you going to change these structures in the way apart, particularly because on the other side you've got an election machine like the BJP? So, I'm not being pessimistic, but I am skeptical because over the years I've heard this before, Nav Sankalp, extraordinary. I hope that Udaipur is different to, you know, there's a new sunrise in your party, S-U-N and not S-O-N. And uh, we see it actually happening on the ground. Good luck to you. Uh, Rajdeep, uh, Udaipur, in the name itself, there is a Uday. And I am saying it is now Sankal. And you gave one data to us that are you going to change this? Rajdeep, wait for one more day. Day after tomorrow evening, you will going to get a concrete answers. Our no. workers, our sympathizers, our well-wishers and the people of this great country is going to get concrete answers on, on you know, different Gaurav issues. Gaurav Vallabh is, uh, a, and what bright, is, the Congress answers is, is a bright professor issues? of finance. Yeah. People like him are not the problem in the Congress. The problem is the party doesn't have leadership. Until the question of leadership is addressed, no matter what Gaurav's panel on economics and the other five panels that they have come up with, those words mean nothing because you need a leadership that can energize the cadre, inspire voters, and till that happens, nothing really changes. And like we saw with the Prashant Kishore episode, even See, if there Rahul. is sound and fury, it needn't amount to very much in the end. Kaushik Deka, you've written the India Today cover story, you're speaking to Congress leaders across factions. Will there be a decisive, extraordinary resolution on... Leadership, will Rahul Gandhi, that's, that's really the only question. Is Rahul Gandhi prepared to walk out, let somebody more deserving come in and take over? Or will they find some way of ensuring that he comes back again? That really is the only question to look out for in this shivir. I don't think Rahul, uh, and uh, Rahul Gandhi is not walking out. What has happened in last two years, uh, in fact, it will be three years, he quit as Congress president, but every decision the party takes needs his uh, consent. Nothing happens in the party without his consent. Now that creates an extra constitutional authority. Then there are people who depend on Sonia Gandhi's uh, consent and Sonia Gandhi's permission for doing anything. Then there is a third uh, center, power center, in the form of Priyanka Gandhi. The Congress needs to do a very basic thing that they need to act and to act they need to take decision. Now the decision making process is the problem in the Congress, the real problem. Because uh, if one decision is taken by Sonia Gandhi, she will wait for Rahul's consent and Priyanka's consent and until and unless there is a consensus among the three, nothing moves in Congress. And once the decision is also taken, the way it is executed, there is no accountability because there is no, a No, that we know. I'm asking where, you where's... on the basis of all the leaders that you've spoken to in Rahul's camp and outside, what's your best sense? Will he stand up they, and they take charge again? Call. They are not taking any call on leadership change. The Congress presidential election is happening by the end of September. Now, the key question is whether Rahul will contest himself. If he contests, then nobody will contest. Or whether the family will project a dummy candidate. That's where the, uh, the entire Chintan is uh, revolved around. So I don't think in the Chintan civil they are talking about leadership. They are talking about multiple issues, how to save the country, uh, economic terms, political, even organization. These are cosmetic changes, five years term or uh, one member from a family. That's not the issue. All these things can be decided because the Congress, uh, the whole party, they have information about all these things. Who should be given a ticket? Every screening committee would have information about who is winning, how many times a person has lost or uh, there is a possibility of winning. 
they do all the surveys but decisions are not taken at the time it, they should be taken we have seen that in uh, what happened in punjab or in uttarakhand um, uh, or in goa the real problem is decision making Sanju and Varma that's not happening delighted. and that doesn't happen you know, because usually she'll be very she... charged up wanting to come in here she said aapas mein ladne do inka kuch nahi hone wala they'll come up with nothing but just empty words and that at the end will not really amount to much of a challenge for the bjp uh, rahul uh, nice to see you back at 8 pm um, i just want to say a couple of things you know uh, i agree with rajdeep for a change the more things change sometimes the more they remain the same and i'm reminded of a very famous a favorite of mine a quote by muhammad a favorite quote from muhammad ali the great boxer who said it is not the big mountains in front of you that weigh you down or wear you down it is often the small pebble in your shoe and i think rahul gandhi is now that pebble in the shoe for the congress who refuses to fully commit to the cause of the congress and at the same time he refuses to step down so the congress is basically in a state of perennial suspension uh, i want to also draw your attention to one very important thing you know sonia gandhi said that the restructuring of the party uh, will address three things uh, the ideological issues grappling the party the managerial issues grappling the party and the electoral issues grappling the party i think the electoral issues grappling any party including the congress are a function of the ideological issues and the managerial issues as far as ideology goes let's be very clear congress has no ideology so to speak of it allied with the sdpi in the karnataka civil body polls it allied with the radical welfare party of india in the kerala polls and it allied with somebody like a badruddin ajmal in assam so basically their politics is politics of opportunism and convenience which has been completely trashed by the electorate speaking okay, no. of managerial speaking of managerial abilities <coughs> tell me one thing i ask both you rahul and radhi how many uh, you know uh, votes did bjp win in lok sabha 2014 it was close to 17 crore odd how many did we win in 2019 it was about 22.6 crore odd which is basically a 32% jump in 2019 vis-a-vis 2014 now even people who do not like bjp and are very conservative while giving out their estimates these political pundits have said that in 2024 even if bjp improves its chances by just 15 15 or 20% over 2019 even then it will have in its city anywhere between 26 no, no, to 27 no no one second sanju varma accusing the congress of opportunism that madam is a charge that can be leveled on multiple parties including Rahul, yours in the tie up between the pdp and the bjp opportunism is in the problem all parties are opportunistic the bigger problem is the problem of leadership rajdeep what's your best sense at this moment on how this this 300 pound gorilla about whether rahul gandhi is coming back or does he have the good sense to walk away how is that likely to be addressed that isn't going to be addressed in the chintan shivir and i think there's enough indication to the fact that whatever is the leadership issue has been kept for august september when the organizational elections are expected to be concluded we don't know the uncertainty at the moment will persist in my view till july august there will be the echoes the chorus will be there saying we want rahul gandhi as a party president but the sense i get what sources tell me he hasn't yet made up his mind but does he ever make up his mind no we don't know whether rahul gandhi at the moment wants to be party president or wants to look for a non congress uh, uh, a non gandhi congress leader we are told that he wants to look for a non gandhi congress leader but it's been 3 years and therefore there is the criticism na banunga na banne dunga if rahul gandhi genuinely wants a non congress uh, a non gandhi congress leader there's no reason why he can't uh, find one there's been you know it's been almost 3 years since he resigned who is that leader going to be and can that leader alone transform the party is the question will he be someone who simply is there in the shadows or will he be someone who will be given an identity of his or her own that's the challenge the congress has to start deciding i don't think at the moment the gandhis are going anywhere let's be very clear so they don't need to go anywhere they well, can be in the party but have a real leader who knows what he is doing who wants to do their job who's committed to that job full the all day long like modi shah like kejriwal 
that alone is not going to solve the Congress's crisis. Nothing crime. alone will solve it as a it is, decision. It is, I keep saying, Rahul, it is a patient at the moment in ICU. Band-Aid will no longer work. But you need to know who your doctor is. <laughs> right now, they don't know who the doctor is. No, the doctor has to be someone who can command the respect of his own party. And an important thing that Sanju Verma said is also able to get voters to vote for the party. You see, the Congress has grown from about to give you figures from 2009 when they won an election to 2021. They've been around between 9 and 11 crore voters. The BJP has grown from 7 to 8 crores to 21 crores. So it's not just about what the congressmen want, but what does the country want? The Congress has to decide. If you want to say Desh Bachao, it can't start with Congress Bachao. It has to then yeah, but start... But Congress ni Gandhi family Bachao. That seems to be the big concern. The Congress... And the whole patronage system around them, which Shantanu Gupta just doesn't want to change, which from the BJP's perspective is ideal, because that's exactly how the BJP would want things to be. I think as, Raj, as Rajdeep said, Congress seems to be in ICU, and this shiver is almost like like putting a dhania on a badly cooked burnt dish, right? It will, three days will do nothing. Uh, so, you know, right now, as we are speaking, Yuva Morcha of BJP is doing a similar Chintan Shivar. The Yuva Morcha, a small unit of BJP is doing a Chintan Shivar in Himachal Pradesh. Whole of UP, just after winning the election, is doing a prescription Shivar in every 75 districts, just after winning the election. And central team of BJP is concentrating on 75,000 weak booths, which they not won convincingly or did not won in 2019. This is the level of what BJP is putting, right? So three-day Chintan Shiver and just, just hear the speech of Sonia Gandhi. She is still playing the minority victim card, polarization. That's people, people are not ready to hear that. And as, as we all are discussing, will Rahul Gandhi go versus, a, versus a Narendra Modi, like whose image of non-corruptibility, his efficient governance and his hard work, right? You can't match them with the nightclub photos. So I think it's a total mismatch. This three days maybe will create some TV debates like us and then I think Congress will back to normal. Maybe they will put Rahul Gandhi back and I think that's all. No, but that's the fear, Rashid Kidwai, that after these three days, far from what Gaurav Vallabh is promising, there will be nothing tectonic, there will be nothing earth-shaking. The Congress will have these six resolutions, there will be finely worded resolutions, uh, put out in a strong, academically robust fashion, but nothing will change. You won't get the kind of opposition that can get under the skin of the ruling BJP and Sanju Verma and others in the BJP would be delighted. But Rahul, whatever the Congress does, it is not going to satisfy either Mr. Shantanu Gupta or Sanju Verma. So you sure. must get that straight. Second thing is, you, about, you see, uh, Chintan Shivar of 2013, Rahul, at Jaipur, Rahul Gandhi was made Vice President of the Congress. So, there is a history. Rahul was recently there holding a public meeting in Varangal, then he was there in Gujarat, he slated to uh, hold a public meeting in, in uh, Udaipur also. You see these pictures that were showing visuals, how he was accorded importance. Uh, so it all indicates that the, as far as political leadership is there, it's going to be with Gandhi's. Third thing, the Congress constitution makes it clear that tenure of new Congress president would be from 2022 to 2027, five long years. Do you think Congress can afford to have a non-Gandhi member, or for the better Gandhi's themselves, can afford to have someone, uh, a non-Gandhi member for till 2027? So these are the questions that Congress needs to find an answer. Okay, Sanju Verma. No, once yeah. again, the, the one point may that Rashid Kidwai makes, which every congressman or most congressmen would agree with, is that Gandhis are the glue that hold the Congress together. That without the Gandhis, a Chidambaram may not listen to a Gulam Nagar. I'm making up the names, but take put any names over there. That the senior leaders will simply not listen to each other, and the party or whatever is left of it will fragment even further. Rahul, is that for me? Yeah, go on, Sanju. Okay. You know, Rahul, I want to ask you, with a man in your heart, tell me, will Sonia Gandhi plus Priyanka Padra plus Rahul Gandhi, the dynasty put together, do they have the ability and the competence to muster the 26 or 27 crore odd votes that the BJP is slated to get in 2024? Because let's not kid ourselves, 2024, is the big war that is on the anvil. And I also want to tell you one more thing. You know, they talk about 
एम्पावरमेंट लड़की हूँ लड़ सकती हूँ देर इज नॉट लर्न के लेसन देर आर ओनली थ्री वुमेन इन कांग्रेस वर्किंग कमिटी एंड आउट ऑफ दो थ्री ओनली अंबिका सोनी इज द नॉन गांधी the other two are sonia gandhi and priyanka wadra charity begins at home you talk of women and empowerment you talk of empowering the marginalized sections of this society but why is it that for donkey years you have not been able to identify any apart from ambika soni how is it that ladki who lad sakti ho campaign se nidra bhi but priyanka wadra continues to be a member of the congress working committee how is it that the congress has lost more than 45 big and small elections in the last 8 years but rahul gandhi is still the man who is likely to take up the mantle if he would have been a part of the corporate sector he would have been sacked long back because the zero performance and no, so the corporate sector is is a, is not the right benchmark look at any other democratic system in any country whether it is say the us or the uk uh gaurav vallabh a leader who takes his party to defeat after defeat in the manner in which sonia and rahul gandhi have done would themselves be so embarrassed and ashamed that they would make way and the party would demand that a new leader be instated that doesn't <coughs> seem to happen in the congress this whole clamor the whole reportage that we are seeing is for why the congress desperately needs rahul gandhi to come back Uh, rahul one by one i will answer all your questions yes question, please uh, question to your question uh, answer to your question number 1 that chintan shivir rahul is not for selecting congress president this chin sure. congress president elections are uh, is is uh, are currently going on and we are going to get that in the month of august this is point number 1 second the madam from bjp madam in the bjp How many women are there in your parliamentary vote? Thoda bataiye na, ma'am. Is there you any know, women in your uh, in the past as your president? Had RSS was headed But by you any know, women? So don't give lectures here, TV please, ma'am. Have decency. Please, please have decency. No, no, that is not allowed. No, please decency. You have been electorally wiped out. Please, please, no. please, please have some. Rahul, please control the. Okay. No, Sanju Verma. Like Sanju, Sanju Verma. Let Gora Vallabh speak. This is not right. Sanju Verma. You made a point. Let Gaurav conclude, please. Gaurav, go ahead. So I asked, I asked, madam, that in the past, who was your uh, women president of BJP? Answer is no, none. Is there any women in your parliamentary board of BJP? Answer is none. Was RSS headed by BJP any time after its formation? Answer is none. And giving lectures to us that only Ambika Soni, Priyanka Gandhi, we are proud. We are proud to say. that our party is headed by a women her name is sonia gandhi this is point number 2 point number 3 ma'am don't give lecture on alliances we know that you are the party who had made the alliances with the muslim league and formed a a, a municipality corporation madam, madam, in the in the nagpur you are the party who had made an alliance with the pdp and rahul you will be surprised they are the people who got the votes of badruddin ajmal's party mla for their rajya sabha candidate yahan aake bhashan dete ho aur badruddin ji ke pair pakad lete ho vote ke liye sharam nahi aayi sharam nahi aati aapko bolte hue wo assam ja ke badruddin ke pairon mein gir jate ho apne rajya sabha ke candidate ke liye ya humko bhashan dete ho aur pdp ke sath kisne sarkar banayi thi नागपुर में मुस्लिम लीग के साथ अलायंस किसने किया था यू डोंट हैव आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन एंड नाउ स्टार्ट शाउटिंग ऑन द शो अपार्ट फ्रॉम लेक्चरिंग द बीजेपी मैंने तो आपसे पूछा ना हु इज योर हाउ मेनी वुमेन आर देयर इन योर पार्लियामेंट्री बोर्ड टेल मी एंड टेल द व्यूअर्स ऑफ इंडिया टुडे एंड यू एज ए वुमेन इज डिफेंडिंग दैट आई यू शुड बी अशेम्ड ऑफ दैट आप महिला होके यहाँ पे उनका डिफेंस कर रही हो कि पार्लियामेंट्री बोर्ड में कोई महिला नहीं है कोई बात नहीं वो आप उसका डिफेंस कर रही हो यहाँ बैठ के ओके सम आउट ऑफ टाइम आई वॉन्ट एंड दिस शो वैया दिस इज दिस इज जिस डिबेट एंड रेट्रिक दिस इज नॉट द कोर इशू द कोर इशू इज हु विल लीड द कांग्रेस पार्टी इन द बिल्ड अप टू टू जीरो टू फोर कैन ही रैली ही और शी रैली कांग्रेस लीडर्स इंस्पायर वोटर्स uh ensure that other opposition parties come together under some kind of a consolidated umbrella those are critical questions those questions will be addressed only when the leadership issue is addressed everything else 
is just noise which amounts for precious little. But we'll track what happens over the next two days. For the time being, I want to thank Rashid Kidwai, Kaushik Dekha, uh, Shantanu Gupta, uh, Sanju Varma and Gaurav Vallabh. Gaurav, you have a bit of a bad throat. Take care of yourself. And I hope, like you're saying, that something meaningful does emerge. Otherwise, this shivir will not amount to very much.